OpenAI announced a great update for their Responses API, which now supports MCP servers natively and also offers some new exciting features. If you don't know what the Response API is and what is the difference in comparison to the Completions API, watch this video first. I also got a video on MCP if you don't know what that is. You can get the link to the code in the description and let's directly jump into the code. Okay, I'm known VS Code and on the left you can see multiple folders and files. For this video, relevant is the Responses API folder and inside there you will find an MCP server.py and a Responses API.ipy notebook. There is also a .n file, you have to create that and put your OpenAI key into that folder to make the code work with the Responses API. Let's first have a look at the MCP server. So this is a dummy server which has got a clothing DB in memory under the hood with three items, a t-shirt, jeans and a hoodie. And we call it the closing price server. We offer three tools to get the price of a single item, to add an item and also to list all of the available items. So three tools exposed via MCP. We use Dream over HTTP, which is the preferred way to expose an MCP server and run it on port 3000. You can navigate to the responses API folder and then just run python mcp server.py. This will now start UB icon and here you can see this is running on port 3000 and every MCP server is via default exposed on slash MCP. And this is what we're gonna now access. Okay, so first we're gonna load the OpenAI API key. Again, I said we have to put that in the .n file. We gonna load that if it was loaded correctly, then we can see a true. To use the response API, we do the following. From the OpenAI package, we import the OpenAI class, instantiate that, and here, now we've got our client. Here with client.responses, we use the response API, and then we want to create a request to OpenAI. We use the model, in this case, GPT-4 Mini, since it's the cheapest, and now we can use this tools list and put some MCP servers here. We can just create a dictionary, and the first key is type, MCP. So this means that this type of tool is an MCP server. We also have to put a label. So this label has to match the name of our MCP server. So this is clothing price server. And so the server label here is exactly the same. Now we set our server URL and it's on localhost port 3000 slash MCP. So this is where our server is living. And surprise, surprise, you will see the following now. If we run as input list all available clothing tools and their prices. The result is an error, API status error. So why does this happen? Our server is running on port 3000. But as we can see, it's running on port 3000, but nothing is happening. So why is that? So the reason is that we don't call our server on our local host ourselves, but everything is happening on the OpenAI servers. So the OpenAI server is of course running somewhere in the cloud, and it has no access to our local machine. And of course, this makes the development of um, MCP servers in combination with the response API a little bit more difficult. So one solution for that is to use ngrok. So this is totally free and easy to set up. I just created an account, then I logged in and create or download first, of course, the exe file for Windows. You can also download it for Linux and Mac. And then you just follow the command lines here. So how you can deploy your app online. So this is your local host and you just reference the path of the executable, in this case, ngrok.exe, and I expose port 3000 now in the internet. I click enter and now I can see that this is now the URL exposed in the internet and I can test my MCP server, which is only running on local host in port 3000. The next step is to copy the URL and you have to do that again if you changed it. So this will be randomly generated. So this is a UID and this will now be our server. And as you can see now, something is going on here. So what happens? We can see in the response, just gonna create a new one. The response object looks like this. So this is a response object and normally the output is in output text, but we can see it, this is only an empty string. The reason for that is that here, as we use MCP in combination with the response API, has got a human in the loop workflow. So what we get is if we have a look at the response object, 
that there is an output and a type. And if the type is MCP approval request, we can access the approval ID. So, so this is what we need. And now we have to use that approval ID and create a follow-up response. And now we have to paste the input like this. So of type MCP approval response with the approval request ID, which we saved here. So we now have to paste it here as value. And the proof is true. We can also set this to false if we don't want to continue using the MCP server. And again, we have to provide the tools with the type MCP server label and the URL again. And then since this response API is stateful, we also have to extract the ID from the response and use it here as previous response ID. So this is how we set up our follow-up request to the response API. And this time, if we have a look at the output text, we can see here are the available clothing items. And these are the three items that we created here in the MCP server in memory database. So this works, but we also can do it without a human in the loop. And this is quite easy to do. We only have to add another attribute here, which is require approval and set that to false. So also keep in mind that of course the server URL has to be correct here. So we can just copy it there. And then again, we want to list all available clothing items and the prices. And okay, there was a 404. Okay, this also worked. And as you can see, we did not have to allow the LLM to access the MCP server this time. Okay, and that was everything about the response API and MCP. There are two additional features that the response API offers. This is some code I will not run because here, as you can see, the input is write me an extremely long story. And the model is 03 because we want the reasoning model, set the effort to high. And this will take a long time. And this will probably cost me uh, twice as much as this video will ever make. So I will not run the code. But important here is this background mode. So Important if you have a long and complicated task, normally if you use the response API, then your client will terminate the connection to the server and you will run in a timeout error. If you set this to background, then you can lean back and wait for the response and also check uh, how the progress is and take the response a little bit later. What's also cool is, is the following, that if you use the reasoning model, then you get a lot of thinking tokens. But what's cool is you can also get a short version of that. And it is by using reasoning. And then you can set the summary to auto. And this will create a summary for the used reasoning tokens. So also cool if you use a model like O3, which uses a lot of thinking tokens, especially if the reasoning effort is high. OK, that's it about the news of MCP, the response API, and of course, also the other new two features. If you liked the video, then leave me a like. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.